What's up guys, this is a uh, continuation video on my last one about their $200 million, or up to $200 million, I should say, uh, cash raise. This is gonna be over the 6K filing. Um, the one I went over was the F3 filing. A uh, Form 6K is just the cover page for a report. Or in this case, it's a corporate presentation of Nano Dimension dated October, 2020. We can go into either of these, it'll take us to the same place, so if we go here, and then we scroll down, we'll see this corporate presentation of Nano Dimension, or we could just click it directly from the main page. So currently, Exhibit 99.9 .9 is the most recent presentation given by Nano Dimension as of today. So in it, we're gonna see their forward-looking statements. You can pause if you wanna read this. On page three, we'll come across their table of contents, their executive summary, their business model, technology, market, business in the times of CV19, strategy and tactics, and the appendix. So just to do a quick recap of what exactly Nano Dimension is, is they're an additive manufacturing electronics industry leader. And additive manufacturing is just a way of saying 3D printing. So it's uh, essentially adding material over and over again, hence the name additive manufacturing. They have patent protected and proven technology. They have a first to market advantage. Approximately 60 systems have been sold worldwide as of today and they have an increasing recurring revenue of proprietary conductive and dielectric materials. And they also have a strong cash position, 45.7 million in September of 2020. This includes their short and long-term bank deposits, but not including their most recent 16.9 million offering. So Nano Dimension says they have sold 60 systems globally. They don't really give too many details, but right now they have three multi-billion dollar defense manufacturers in the US. They have two European defense companies and multiple secret services, one multi-billion dollar value technology conglomerate. I wonder which one this might be. I think it's TTM Technologies, but I could be wrong. And multiple leading research institutions around the world. So I'm thinking schools, universities, things of that nature. So here they are again, comparing themselves to a biotech investment model. I don't know why they compare themselves to a biotech, but they say upside like biotech, but contrary to biotech downside in case of failure at any stage is protected as a sale of the existing business at improving multiples. As per stages one through four below is a valid and doable financial exit through a sale to strategic buyers. So what they're saying is unlike biotech companies that can fail and go to nothing in pretty much an instant, they're saying they have a different product with existing business, so they're not really at the same risk. They have their own proprietary technology, they have patents, they already have business relationships with previous customers, and if they needed to, they could liquidate the company of everything it has as a means of exit of the company. Do I think they'll do that? I really doubt it. But that's how they back themselves up as failsafe. So stage one through three is their phase where they expand into different industries. And stage four and five are for low production and medium production volume systems. So in a nutshell, they're saying you can go from all of this equipment and real estate that you would need for traditional prototyping and instead replace it with a dragonfly printer that does all of these processes in one small location. So imagine instead of having 10 factories, you just have 10 of these machines. Besides reducing operational costs, it just takes up less room and leaves more space for more production in other areas. There's other benefits from it, but I'm just gonna keep going. As I mentioned in previous videos, they also have their nano services. So if you have no means of purchasing a Dragonfly printer, they offer their 3D printing services. You would send your CAD or SOLIDWORKS file to them to compare, and then they print the part for you and then ship it to you in the shortest time possible. And from their experience, they're saying it takes about a week. So I'm gonna show this. If you wanna read this, just pause this and I'm gonna keep going. Also with this one. So I'm gonna go over the uh, Nano Dimension projected financial data. So as of October 20th, they have 54 and a half million shares outstanding. They have invested $80 million into their company over the last five years and are currently sitting on 45.7 million plus their 16.9 million offering. Their revenues grew at 39% compared to 2019, and they were seeing gross margin improvements. So as stated, they have a recurring revenue model that scales. As the installed base of system grows, the recurring revenues from consumables increases. They've seen a positive trend of increased ink consumption by customers, and this is a validation to their recurring business models. So they're seeing customers starting to use more ink than they used before. So this could be really nice for cash flows to Nano Dimension in the future. And we can see how their research and development has impacted them over the last several years. This is what their first Dragonfly printer looked like. And then it turned into the Dragonfly Pro. 
and then eventually that turned into the Dragonfly LDM, and the Dragonfly LDM is their latest printer. So here's an interesting slide about a post-CV19 world. They say companies are gonna move their supply chains in-house. The global supply chain right now is disrupted. We are seeing disruptions across the board. The high-tech industry is heavily reliant on China and parts of Asia. But essentially due to CV19, there will be changes. And of course, we can't forget to mention the compound annual growth rate, which they're expecting to be 24%. They're seeing 10 billion in revenues in 2036 worldwide. So what are the key highlights in this presentation? They're a growth company with first mover advantage. They're expected to reach their inflection point as a business. They have a blue chip customer base worldwide. Most technology stocks that you see on the market will have purposeful use of nano dimension printers. They're now offering prototyping as a service. They have a recurring revenue business model. And right now they're in a strong cash position to advance their business plans to commercial success. So there's a ton of useful and interesting content in here for nano dimension. If you're an investor in nano dimension, I would definitely take a look at this. So that sums up the presentation minus the appendix. If you want to go look at the presentation, I'm going to leave a link in the description so you guys can click on that. Check it out and tell me what you guys think in the comments. This is kind of a tough time for Nano Dimension to be attempting to grow their business right now, especially with CV19. But if they can pull it off, I think it's going to be even better post CV19. So we'll just have to wait and see. So that pretty much wraps up this video. If you like to watch videos like these, go ahead and hit that like button and even consider subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to hit the bell notification to get notified when I make videos just like this one. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.